Welcome aboard. Welcome to the podcast. It's time for Hawk Talk with Jerry Hawk. I get called in when stuff's going sideways. And I can I can be delicate. I can be very articulate. I can be, you know, nice. But really, that's not why you hire me. You hire me to come in there and wake people up. So there's a really simple thing you can do. Really simple. I'm going to show it to you on my magic board here. It's, I call it being clear. And it's, taking from, it's taken from a couple of different books. The Art of a Focused Conversation and Crucial Conversations. It's two great books. Um, so if, if two, two parties, two functions are not getting along, we've got to set up ground rules, right? <clears throat> so here's the ground rules. And uh, let, let's just call this being clear. Okay? So, so many people have to be clear. But they don't know what they want. They're, so they, they just start babbling. And the, the, the emotion that's present is usually fear or shame. Um, and, and that's a really qu quick thing. And I hope if you pick up anything from listening to me, it's on how to read people's emotions. So, I mean, they're either, in, they're either mad, sad, glad, fear, or shame. Or maybe they're all five of them all at once. But the, what you got to do as a leader or a conflict resolutor is meet them where they're at emotionally. So, again, taken from a couple of different books, um, uh, I, I, I really recommend this. Read those books. Do this. Identify the emotion. Identify the data and facts. Identify the assumptions and judgments. And then identify what I want. So if you're working with somebody or coaching somebody, that's really you can start with it. <clears throat> if somebody's stuck, you can just say, hey, you know, what do you want? What do you mean, what do I want? I don't know what I want. I've had, I've had high performers, high performance, fly your own plane, build your own home, uh, 500 employees, not know what they want. It's, it's not a shame. It's nothing to be ashamed of. It's just the way it is. We're not always really clear with what it is that we want. That's why vision is so important when you're working with your client, of, of understanding where are we going? What's the big picture here? So getting back to this, if there's conflict or you have conflict with self, first you have to identify what is it that I'm feeling? Am I feeling mad, sad, glad, fear? Shame? Am I feeling two or three of those? Okay. What's, what's the source? What's the story? Because a lot of times these assumptions, these judgments, it's just a big fat story you got made up in your head. I'll give you an example. Worked with a, a really uh, a global team. And one part of the team was trying to get some new product manufactured. Another, the, the manufacturing part of the team didn't want to produce the product. So brought them all together, trying to sort out, what's the story here? The clients want this product. We don't want to make it. So part of the story behind the story was, well, the last time we made this, X, Y, Z happened. Okay. When was that? And then 
you do some, you know, further investigation, you find out it happened like three years ago. But yet this team is still carrying something that happened three years ago and bringing it to the party. And that's why they're, they're in conflict, cause, and that's what they're not clear. They don't want that to happen again. Instead of collaborating and thinking it through and really getting out ahead of it and being proactive, there's some kind of story there. And a lot of times, the real facts and the real judgments become intertwined. And as a coach, and as a leader, and that's what you are, you have to pull that apart. What are the facts? You, when I was growing up, there was a, a, a TV show called Dragnet. And Joe Friday would always say, just the facts, ma'am. Anyway, a lot of times the facts are mixed in with the story. And as a leader, you have to pull that apart. And what you'll find is inside of that, there, it's usually laced with some kind of dripping fear or shame that maybe there was a screw up. And really, ultimately, we want to get to this. What we want to create or collaborate or, or make happen. This is the key. Play with this. Read the books. The Art of a Focused Conversation is a fantastic book. There's so many books out there that all the information is there. You just have to practice this stuff. That's all.